Hello and welcome to this overview of Anderson Optimization. I'm going to take you through basic project setup. We'll cover how to add grid infrastructure, adding parcels via a few different methods. We'll run a buildable area analysis. We'll filter, sort, create a short list of parcels that look good for our project and we'll also cover some exports. We've got a lot to cover, so let's dive in. If you've logged in before, you'll recognize this page as your dashboard. Everything in AO is divided by states, and so this drop-down menu will allow you to select the state that you'd like to work in. Here you have a few different views available, so as you start to create projects, those recently viewed projects will populate in a list view here. And here we have view projects, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, and then we have create. So let's go ahead and create our first project together. After you click create, you're going to have three project types to pick from. So these are really just a starting point. We're just going to start with either a substation or a line for our project. And then site analysis is going to be if I have an existing site, maybe an M&A, and I want to analyze the hazards or see where that nearby grid infrastructure is. All the functionality in the platform is the same. We'll go ahead and choose a substation search. We'll enter in a name for our project here. Description, stage, priority, these are all optional. and We can edit them later. And then here our map is going to populate with our substations. I can move around on the map as you can see. If I hover over a particular substation, it's highlighted on the map. Clicking on a substation will give me a little bit more information about that particular sub. If I'm focused on a particular county, I can use this magnifying glass to get me there. If I have a specific APN or lat long points, I can enter those. I can also search by city or county. So I'm going to pick a substation here. If that looks good. We'll go ahead and click select. It's going to populate down here in the list. We'll click next. And to finish creating my project, we'll hit that create button. And now I have a basic project set up. And everything we do moving forward is going to be saved automatically. It's very easy to collaborate in AO because the projects are all visible and accessible to anybody else in your company who has a license. Um, so that means that you can just share this URL with your teammates or even with our support team if you need a pointer. Um, they'll be able to see exactly what you're seeing. If you want to navigate back to the dashboard, really easy to do so. Go ahead and click on your company logo or name and it'll bring you right back here. And as you can see, here's the project that we just created. So I'll go back into it. So our project has two major sections here. We have the map view, as you can see, and I'm going to pull up this asset drawer. And here we'll have all of the relevant data. It's going to be a mirror of what's on the map, just presented in a table format. So we've got our substation here. When we add parcels, those will be populated down here and so on and so forth. There's a few different ways to pull in parcels. Um, the quickest way is through this sidebar here. Go ahead and add land. Here I can enter in my minimum number of parcels I'm looking for. And I have an option to check this box. And so this is going to bring in scenarios where I have parcels that meet my minimum criteria of 35 acres. But it's also going to bring in scenarios where I have that contiguous land with the same owner. And there's a few parcels that add up to that minimum acreage. Next, we'll decide how close we want to be to this substation. And then we'll go ahead and search. And looks like we found 24 parcels on this project. If that looks good, uh, we can add them to the project. If this number is too high or too low, we can adjust this criteria so we can get the right number of parcels we want to work with for our project. One other thing to note is that if I had added power lines to my project, I could search around both of those types of grid infrastructures at once. And then I have some additional options down here where I can search in the intersection of those search areas or I can search in any of those search areas. We'll go ahead and add those parcels to our project. And while those come in, I'll just have a quick note on parcel data usage. 
Parcel data inherently has a cost, and so each account has a specified allotment of parcels that your account manager will go over with you in training. Our data provider is Report All. And now that we have our parcels added to our project, I can tell you a few more ways to add parcels. And that's going to be through our layer catalog, which is accessible here. Now I'll just toggle on that layer. You can see that data start to populate. If I click on a parcel, it's going to show me that metadata that the county collects. And if it looks good, I'll add it to my project. And let's say I wanted to add some parcels in bulk from this layer. I can absolutely do that. I'm going to head up to Map Tools, select by Polygon, Features from a Layer, and then Parcels. And so I'll just draw out my polygon here. I can enter in that acreage criteria if I would like to. If I want to add everything in this polygon, I can put zero. And then same as before, we'll get count to see how many results fit that criteria. And then we'll select Run to bring them in. And now that we've created a project around our targeted grid infrastructure, we've pulled in parcels via the parcel search and from the parcels layer. Now we can run that buildable area analysis. We'll create a constraint map, calculate buildable acreage, so we can quickly narrow down this parcel list to a short list of high quality parcels. We'll have some settings to fill out that we will go through, but we can create templates and make it very easy for us. Again, I'll reference that sidebar here, which brings up our form for the analysis. Every one of these hazards is going to allow us to enter in a setback. And we also have the source data linked here for further review, if you like. I'm going to plug in some random numbers here for the parcel boundary setback. For slope, uh, you can enter in a max slope percentage for all aspects. But if you want to get really granular, you can also do it per aspect. So we'll plug some numbers in here, show you what that looks like. Next, we have flood. One thing to note about flood is sometimes it's okay to build in the 500 year buildable area. And to tell the system that that's okay, I will just uncheck that box. Next, we have wetlands, trees. Um, this defaults to 50%, but you can change that however you need to. Next, we have bedrock depth, and so this is going to ask us to enter in how much topsoil we need for our project. And the goal of this setting is to flag those areas where bedrock depth may be an issue. We recommend getting some intel from your engineering folks for some specifics on what to input, if anything, for this setting. Next, we'll cover infrastructure, which is going to deal with anything that is on the parcel level itself. And then we have conservation easements, critical habitats, and then public lands. If I scroll back up to the top here, I'm going to see another tab of settings. Here we have a minimum size buildable area. And so you can set this so you don't end up with tiny isolated sections. So think one acre here and there marked as buildable and adding it to that total buildable acreage for the parcel. Uh, we do recommend you set this much lower than the total acreage you would need for a site so that you're not removing sections of land that you would actually take, even if they aren't contiguous. So the goal here, we're going to sift out some tiny sections. And then we have slivers. This is going to remove narrow pieces of land that are just too narrow for solar arrays. And there's two settings here. Normal is going to be a 40 meter width. And this is going to be for your DG, community solar, smaller type projects. And then aggressive is geared toward utility scale. And this is 100 meter width. Once you have those settings down, you can go ahead and create a template here. And then next time you run that analysis, you can just select your template from the drop down and run it. So we'll go ahead and run this analysis. And then we can review the constraint map. So we'll see this map start to change. And then if I pop open this asset drawer here, we're going to start to see this buildable area column start to populate as well. And as that runs, a quick note on slope, we do use the best slope data available. So that can get down to two meters in some areas. And it looks like our analysis is complete. Go ahead and minimize that drawer so we can see the map a little bit better here. The constraint map is fully interactive. I can toggle the entire thing off, or I can isolate certain hazards or the buildable area just by clicking on them in the legend. 
I can also turn it completely off and rid the map of the legend by clicking on this little square right here and clicking back on it will bring the map and legend back for you. If I click on a parcel, I'm going to get a pop up here that's going to include some specifics about those settings that I entered. So other users can tell what parameters you've used if they need to. And then here we have that underlying parcel data, if that is of interest. In the table view, I can review the buildable area. I can sort these columns by ascending or descending. So I can see here there's a few columns that don't have any buildable area. And from this big list, we can quickly sort and filter to remove these from our list. So to do that, I'll click on the filter button here, select buildable area. You can see the map has changed as well as this table view. Go ahead and select all of these, click the three dot menu, and we'll go ahead and remove these from our project. And my map is going to populate as well. And you may have noticed if I hover over a row, uh, you can see that on the map. I'll turn the constraint map off so it's a little more obvious there. And another thing we can do aside from bulk deleting parcels is we can bulk update them. And so let's say I want to change this star rating for parcels with the most buildable acreage. So let's say anything greater than 20, I want to star those. So again, I'll select them all by clicking this box and then that three dot menu, bulk edit, rating, and then I'll see that map in list view has changed. So very easy to apply filters and narrow down your parcel list. Other columns that might be of interest are agreement type and site control status. I can edit these right from the table view in addition to any field that's not a system created field. So I'll just double click in the table and I'll have this drop down here. I can also add a note if I would like to. So you can see it's very interactive and easy to work with and update. And now that we've gone over how to review parcels by sorting, filtering, rating, and adding notes, I want to show you how to customize this column view. This three dot menu here, click columns. There's a search box if you know which column you're searching for, but you can scroll down, add additional columns as you see fit. You can also drag and drop these columns to your preferred order, and you can even pin columns if that is of interest. It's a lot of great functionality there. Next, we'll move on to our exports. If you are a PV case user, we have a PV case specific export that will export that terrain data. We have KML export as well, and a couple different options here as it pertains to folder structure. So I'll go ahead and show you those. This first version is going to make it easy to hide and show layers across every parcel in a site. So this is helpful for users who need to upload separate layers to design software, or they want to isolate just the buildable area or a specific hazard. So we can see here under this parcel how that's organized. I'll go ahead and show the second version. And this is going to organize it by owner. And there's some advanced functionality too. So if you don't like the yellow push pins, we'll check this box and now they won't show up in Google Earth. And the second version works well when you want to isolate data by the landowner. So an example would be a DG developer exports a KML with 10 parcels and uh, 10 separate sites. You might not want to show everybody every site at once if you're talking to a landowner, for example. And so this will allow you to isolate that data. And so you can see here under parcels, there is a folder for each of them. The next export will cover um, our shape files. And then we have Excel or CSVs. So we'll go ahead and export some parcel information here. You can see there's some saved templates. You can select all the columns. There's quite a few. If you don't want to select all of them, you can select a subset. So I'll just select a handful. Click view columns to see the list. Make sure you have everything. You can arrange the order with these arrows here on the right, and you can even change the column name on the export, uh, which is key if you are going to import into a CRM, for example. And if I want to save my template, I'll add a name here. And then from there, 
quick export. One thing to note on both of the KML exports and the Excel exports is that filters will apply to them. So if I'm applying a filter on the constraint map, that filter is going to apply and show up on my KML. And then same thing for the um, table view. The next export we have are parcel images. And I have a sample here. It's going to give me two images of the parcel, one with a buildable area and one without. And I'm also going to be able to choose a particular size as well. It's also going to include a CSV contents file, and it's going to have information for bulk mail merges. So when I send out my landowner information, I can include a picture of the parcel. Next, we have the AO report, and I have a sample of that up as well. And this is a really nice PDF presentation style. It's going to run through all the parcel data information, as well as all the hazards that were found or not found. This is on the parcel level. So each parcel on the project will have one of these reports. So you can see it captures some additional data here from the system. And I know that's quite a bit of information, uh, a lot we covered in this session. Please feel free to reach out to our support team if you have any questions, if you need a pointer, for example. You can access our user documentation or our support team directly from AO. Up here in the upper right, this question mark will get you right to our support team. And you can also access our user documentation, which is searchable by keyword. Thanks for taking the time and happy siting.